We are proud to announce the release of ACA Projection 1.0. I'm Renat Cavalcanti from the ACA team at Lightband, and in this video, I'd like to walk you through the basics of ACA Projection. This short video builds on top of event sourcing and CQRS with ACA 2.6 videos. If you have already watched the CQRS video, you see that ACA Projections does exactly what that video was covering, but now in the form of a reusable library. But what is a projection? And why we need it? When building event-driven systems, we often consume events from some source and generate data to some other place. We call it a projection. It can be the read-side model in a CQRS application, it can be publishing a message to a Kafka topic, it can be sending message to an actor, or any other targets. These events are associated with an offset. As we consume them, we want to keep track of the last processed offsets. In case of failures or restarts, we want to resume from where we stopped. A projection is conceived to continuous run in the background. If it stops for some reason, we need to restart it automatically. So we need to have something to manage it. And we want to be able to distribute the consumption in an ACAS cluster so we can scale up and down as needed. To define a projection, we need three components. First, the source provider. It defines the source of the stream. It can be an ACA persistence journal, a Kafka topic, or any other source of events, as long as the events are associated with an offset. The events are delivered in an envelope containing the event payload and its offset. The handler is a user-defined function that will process the event. It's where you write your projection logic. Finally, you need to choose a projection implementation. Choosing a projection implies choosing the type of offset store and the support delivered semantics. We have three projections implementations, Cassandra, JDBC, and Slick. The Slick one is only available for Scala. Each projection implementation provides its own offset store and delivery strategies. This metric shows the support strategies for each implementation. They support almost the same strategies, except for the at most ones that is only available for Cassandra and the exactly ones that is only available for JDBC and Slick. Let's quickly cover each strategy. For at least once, the envelopes are delivered to the handler one by one, and from time to time, the offset gets persisted. For instance, here it is being persisted every three events. This strategy has the advantage that we don't hit the offset store on each envelope. The at least once flow has the same semantics, except that you build your projection using an act stream flow with context, instead of a projection handler. At most once is only available for Cassandra projections. On each envelope, it persists the offset and then delivers the envelope to the handler. If the handler fails, the envelope won't be redelivered. When using a relation database, you have the option to persist the projected model and the offset in the same transaction. This option is only available for JDBC and Slick projection. And finally, the group within variant accumulates the envelopes up to a threshold and delivers them in batches. The handler will get a collection of envelopes instead of a single one, and the offset store will save the highest offsets. Version 1.0 has six artifacts to choose from. We have two kinds of source providers. The event sources is a source provider that reads from any ACA persistence query plugin. The Kafka provider provides a source that delivers events coming from a Kafka topic. And then the three projection implementations we mentioned already, Cassandra, JDBC, and Slick, with corresponding offset stores. Finally, the projection test kit gives you some tooling for testing. In the following example, we will be using the event sourced provider and the Cassandra projection implementation. We will explore the shopping cart sample we have in our documentation sample projects. First, Let's assume that we have an event source behavior producing events tagged with shopping cart. The events are persisted in the ACA persistence Cassandra journal. 
we can configure a source provider to consume the shopping cart's events. We build a source provider using the events by tag query. Then we define an event handler that will process the events. Here we implement an async handler that receives an event envelope and returns a future done. For simplicity, we only log the event, but in a real application, you must probably update the model in the database. We define a projection based on the Cassandra implementation. We choose the at least once delivery strategy. The projection is identified by a projection ID, defined by a name, shopping cart's login, and a unique key. We can use the tag as a unique key. We pass it the source provider and our user handler. When using a projection with at least one strategy, you can define the frequency in which the offsets are persisted. Here we chose to persist on every 20 events or after 2 seconds. To run a projection, we can pass it to the projection behavior. This act of behavior takes the projection and starts the processing. If the projection fails for some reason, the stream will be restarted. It will manage its life cycle. While it's possible to run a projection on a single actor, this is not ideal. First, it means that that single projection will be responsible for processing all the shopping cart's events. And second, if you deploy two or more nodes, you duplicate the projection. You end up with one or more instances of the same projection doing exactly the same work. A better approach is to slice the journal using different tags. As such, we can create as many projections instances as tags. Let's revisit the shopping cart behavior. This time we have four different tags, and we will tag the events using the entity's ID hash code, model, the number of tags. Some events will be tagged with shopping cart 0, others with shopping cart 1, and so on. By using different tags, we create virtual slices or buckets in the journal. Now we can have four projections, each querying one of the tags. We are now ready to distribute the load using a sharded daemon process. Instead of spawning an actor directly, we are going to use a short daemon process. We need a unique name, we call it login cards daemon. We tell it the number of instances we want, which happens to be the same as the number of tags we want to query. The behavior factor will be called four times and we will return a projection behavior each time configured to consume one of the tags. Last, we need to define which behavior message to use when it needs to stop the projection. The stop message is used by the daemon to gracefully stop the projection actor when a cluster rebalance or shutdown takes place. When you run the projections using the sharded daemon process, you can distribute them over different nodes. For example, if you have only one node running, all tags will be processed on that single node. When you deploy a second node, some of the projections run within the daemon will be gracefully stopped and transferred to the new node, allowing you to use the new resources added to the system. You can find more information on the project documentation site where we cover other topics like how to test it using the projection test kits, error handling strategies, and different kinds of handler you can implement. Our secure REST sample, available for both Java and Scala, is now updated to use ACA projections. There you find a more elaborate example of the code shown here. It's a good starting point if you want to learn more about it. Last but not least, you can learn more about CQRS in the Lightband Academy. Thanks for listening.